All right. Capitalist Nick says, just want to go on record that you were dead right about Tucker Carlson. He is the front runner for the 2024 Republican ticket if he wants it. As I told you guys, this is the party. This is the party. And by the way, if Donald Trump gets reelected, it's much more likely Tucker Carlson gets that nomination. And it won't be, it won't be Nikki Haley. It won't be the people you like. It'll be the Tucker Carlson's of the world. The longer Trump stays in power, the more the nationalist, populist, socialist wing of the Republican Party, the stronger it will get, the more dominant it will get, and the more likely, the more likely they will win in 2024 and dominate the Republican Party for decades to come. The only chance of saving the Republican Party is to defeat Donald Trump this election is to make clear that that populism doesn't work. They'll still be around because they'll claim that it was Donald Trump who lost it, not the ideology. But that's the only way to do it. Even if you have to elect a Democrat in order to achieve your goal. All right, let's see. If Donald Trump is, uh, so here's, uh, I'm doing super chat questions now. We've got a lot of them. If Donald Trump is such a statist, why did he make deregulation one of the pillars of his campaign? Because he knows that's what his people want. And, of course, he only deregulated in some fields. The primary places he deregulated were in um, energy, uh, a little bit in education, a little bit in, the FDA, in, in, the, uh, in environmentalism. Um, and primarily, the deregulation was done by people he nominated. But, but again, he has to say the right things to get Republicans to vote for him. And some Republicans, at least, still believe that deregulation is a good thing, and he has, to get them, he has to get them on board. By the way, if you want to ask a question, you ask it through Super Chat, not by sticking my name in red in, in a comment you make. You want to ask a question, use the Super Chat, use the super chat feature. Um, if he wins re-election, he will see, we will see more deregulation and tax cuts. Maybe, maybe. And you will also see the rise of, uh, you know, central planning, control, a decrease in trade. Uh, in certain areas, much more regulation, for example, in finance, uh, in health care, a lot more regulations. Donald Trump has not deregulated finance, did not deregulate health care. Obamacare is still around. Eh, they've chipped at the edges a little bit, but not because Donald Trump wanted. You'd probably get much more socialized health care. Um, no, if Donald Trump gets elected, yeah, you'll see some more de deregulation. Maybe you'll see tax cuts. Not clear if you would, given the deficit. I'm not sure if you could get tax cuts passed. But what you'd see is the rise of real authoritarians, real nationalists, real socialists within the Republican Party, who would then continue to move the Republican Party towards greater and greater state intervention in the economy. And Trump is not opposed to any of that. Again, uh, he's against trade. He likes, to call up, he likes to call up CEOs and tell them what they can and cannot do, where they can and cannot put their plan, which plant they can and cannot close. That's not free markets. Trump is no free marketer. I mean, he was a crony as a real estate developer. He used government to, 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 to go after people's property by using them in a domain. He used government to get favors. He's a crony through and through and always has been. He gave uh, campaign contributions to people like Hillary Clinton when it was convenient, when he thought he could buy favors. Donald Trump does not have a free market or capitalist bone in his body. Yeah, yeah, I know. You guys refuse to see any kind of objective view of Donald Trump. Any, any criticism is TDS. Because you've made a package deal. You've, you refuse to see any failures of Trump. And if after COVID... And after these demonstrations in the streets, you still can't see any failures of Donald Trump. You still think he's your savior. When the economy has just shrunk 5%. When 
when the economy is being devastated and he is president and you give him, you attribute none of that to him. You justify everything he does. You blame me for having TDS? <laughs> you guys have Trump lobotomization syndrome. You can't think anymore. Trump is an enemy of capitalism, an enemy of freedom. Yes, he was good for Israel, particularly on, on moving the embassy to Jerusalem. I'm not sure what else he was good to Israel for, but he moved that. But where is Trump? Yes, he deregulated the energy industry, deregulated the education department a little bit, but federal education department doesn't have that much power. But if I look at government, it's spending much, 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 much more money today than it did when, when uh, Donald Trump was elected president. To me, that is a proxy for how free market you are. At the end of the day, it boils down to how much money do you spend? A, 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 a pro-capitalist president shrinks the state, reduces the amount of money spent by government. Has Donald Trump done that? Has government spending gone down? No, it's gone through the roof. But you all defend him. He's a capitalist. He's the best president in 100 years. He's a wonderful, just wonderful pro-American guy. I mean, it's just stunning to me the level at which people ignore the truth. Somebody says Donald Trump loves America even though he doesn't understand America. Then what is exactly does he love? Empty patriotism. Empty nothing. It's meaningless to love something you don't understand. Right. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. It, all it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.